from the hollers on the hills of West Virginia, it's Heavenly Hills Homestead with another episode. Stay okay. tuned. What I have here is a bushel gourd, or excuse me, a long gourd that's came up. There's another one that's coming up. Here's one that was buried in the dirt. I took it up. It has a root about that long on it. I took the seed jacket off, the uh, coating, whatever you want to call it. Planted the roots back down. This one, um, it was uh, it was still in the dirt, and you can see there's nothing really going on much with it. I was worried it was going to rot, so I took the seed coating off. It looks like there's a little tip there that's trying to grow. We're going to put it right here in this and see what it does in the next couple days. It should throw a root and come up. And then this one over here, I'm getting ready to take the seed coating off of it. So uh, if if for some reason you're having, like this one came up pretty good. That one's trying to come up pretty good. This one hadn't even broke through the dirt yet. I just went on ahead and pulled it up and there the roots were. And then this one right here wasn't doing anything. Like I said, you can see it right there. Having some trouble out of your gourds and things like that, you might want to check on them. It's been my experience that if you check on them and, uh, and go on ahead and, and fix them uh, before they rot, you have a better uh, chance of success of germination and growing a plant. Whereas if you just leave them alone for too long, then you end up getting rot and and then you don't grow what you need to what you're aiming to grow uh so that it's just a little tip for you on growing you know gourds or or uh, pumpkins you know keep a check on them keep them moist and stuff and if they're having some trouble maybe look at the seed and, and if you can help them help them get a little pair of uh multi-tool pliers there and just very gently squeeze the seed you know sideways like this not up and not flat you know to where you're going to squish the seed and squeeze it from the sides and then that coating will open up and the, the seed you can get the seed out okay well good morning yens look here it's alive and well it's doing fine uh it looks worse for wear but uh <clears throat> we'll have to fix it up some today pull it a little tight and we can get in there and take a look at that plant here in just a little bit since it dries up some if it's going to dry up some let me tell you what, ladies and gentlemen, we had the worst wind yesterday since I've put these up that we've that we've had uh, so far this year. Now, you know, whenever if you've been following us for long, you know that uh, it wasn't long ago, about a week or so, we had all that wind, severe wind storm. I I literally had to ratchet strap the greenhouse down because I thought it was going to blow away <clears throat> yesterday. The wind was so bad. Multiple trees back into here broke. That's why I'm showing y'all this back here. Those trees over there in big pines right there, they looked like they was gonna come loose. And uh, I tell you now, it was it was bad. I was sitting on the porch, it flipped over the new swing, it flipped over the old swing, and it had this here blowing like crazy. And I'll be honest with you, I'm surprised it's even standing. That's how bad the wind is, or was. I am literally surprised that it's that it's even here. So it got me thinking. Of course, we're going to leave this here. I might have to fix it here. You know, it's we got some issues going on now, but uh, we'll get it. We'll get it fixed. Ain't nothing but a thing. Uh, anyhow, uh, what I was thinking on yesterday. You know, there, there, there. I can't stop the wind. Okay. God lets it blow where he's going to let it blow. And the only thing I could ever do is pray that God's hand of protection be over my stuff. All right. And even then, the Bible says that the rain falls on the just and the unjust. Okay. So that just means that we all get a little bit of bad in our life. All right. <clears throat> well, these plants, if that wind was to come from this direction like it did yesterday, and some of it was from that direction but if we had that wind don't matter what direction it come from there ain't nothing here okay to block that wind off it'll come through here on this pumpkin patch and it'll destroy this pumpkin patch i mean destroy it now uh break the break the leaves off and everything if you're trying to grow a giant you can't afford to have that happen now i know when i planted my corn here last year 
every year I grow corn. Every year. I have a garden, I grow corn. Every year my corn gets blown down. Last year, my corn almost got blown down during a storm. And I came out here quick, fast, and in a hurry. And I tied off from this post right here. And I may try to go back and save these videos that I had from last year on Facebook. I'll see if I can save them and, and on my phone and then go through them and try to make a, a video out of them. Or several videos, rather, off of them from last year's garden. Anyways, I tied off some... Uh, crap, what's it called? 550 cord, I think. Yeah, parachute cord, 550 cord. Tied it off right here. And I went that way around the edge of my three rows of corn and down to the fence and tied off down there and pulled it tight to where that corn couldn't blow over this way it had the fence here the fence down there and then it had this string outlining it everywhere else and it couldn't blow over well i can't i can't do that and that's just a tip for y'all if y'all want to know how to keep your corn from blowing over if you got a way to band it up somehow to where it uh it won't <clears throat> fall get blown over anyways um i can't do that with pumpkins so when i get my fence put up what i'm going to do is uh i'm gonna have to take the uh this whole patch here and i end up having to do a hundred foot i think because uh the the things come in 50 foot rolls um but what you can do is go on uh, amazon and you can find privacy fencing rolls it's like uh kind of looks like the the jump mat on a trampoline you know real tightly woven and you can take that and they come in you know, six foot tall by you can buy them in 200 foot 300 foot rolls but anyhow i'm gonna buy two 50 foot rolls and i'll have to put it right here and block the wind off of uh off of this right here i'll have to come in this corner here however wide the patch is you come in that corner and then go and down as far as i can that way uh, i don't I'm gonna need to do much up here on this side just a little bit just enough to keep that that uh real south wind from blowing over in here of course it's got a little bit of wind break via the trailer that's there anyhow i might have to do that there and that's the same kind of material that i'm gonna be doing up here at the uh, greenhouse when i put it in only it's just gonna need one fifty footer so uh anyhow i just was thinking on that yesterday and i thought well i can be able to grow no pumpkins if, if that wind comes like that because all it'll take in one storm and it'll destroy the whole patch because there's nothing here to block it i mean nothing nothing to break it up and even when i put that fence up that fence might break it up a little bit but it's not going to do what i need <clears throat> so we got all that going on we'll uh take a look at the i'm telling you it feels warm in there you can feel the top of this and it, it feels nice and warm i got a light big big powerful light i'm gonna put in there tonight for a heat source um probably change out this last cord and put the one with the multiple ends on it so i can get have uh multiple uh plug ins on there be able to get and do what i need to do but as far as i can see I mean, the plant looks fine in there. Big, nice, pretty leaf. Looking good, looking fine. <clears throat> so, let's go on ahead and uh, we're planning for the day. We're going to try to get what we can done today. It's a nasty looking day, but we're going to make the better of it. And uh, and do some things around, the, around here. Get some things done, whatever we can. Well, there he is. The homestead's favorite pig, Chili Mac. Hey, I want my chili, my chili, my chili, my chili, chili, my my. I want my chili, my chili, my chili, my chili, my chili, my my. I want my chili, my chili, my chili, my chili, my chili, my my. He still got a little bit of corn in there from yesterday. He ain't ate it all yet. That's good. Good it means we're feeding him well. It means we are feeding him well. He's a happy hog, yes he is. Happy hog indeed. He's a happy hog, here he is. 
He's gonna feed my family. <laughs> Who think about that? Hot diggity dog. <clears throat> I know some of y'all's thinking, I can't believe you're gonna eat that pig. Well, first of all, he was never our pet. Before anybody gets too attached to him and things, we're gonna have to we had to make a decision. Okay. He does cause some concern around here. So, uh, instead of having a liability like I've talked about in previous videos, we just thought it better to go on ahead and put him on the butcher block here this fall. It'll give us experience butchering our first hog. Okay. And, uh, and everything. So then there'll be no surprise when we butcher another, okay? And I know he's not gonna give us no great big amount of food. I mean, at least it don't look like it just yet, okay? But uh, now when it gets toward toward uh, August, we are gonna feed this joker nothing but corn. And ain't gonna be no crack corn neither. It's gonna be whole corn, whole corn. Is what Chili Mac's gonna be getting. We're gonna take him off of the hog stuff. And we're just gonna feed him plain old corn. And let him let him finish out on corn. They say it's a lot better if you let him finish out on corn. And that's what we're gonna do. Old Chili Mac, so yeah, we just don't want no liability. So like I say, it'll give us it'll give us uh give us some experience. Get us set up like we are now, ready for actual hogs. And uh, we'll know what we're doing better when we go to butcher butcher one. So, uh, he might not produce the most, but we can practice. And we can learn uh, learn some other things, too, as far as, uh, as, far as um, getting... Uh, smokehouse and stuff built and smoking him and getting the bacon cured and things so we'll learn a lot from this pig and it won't be a lot of waste you know so it'll be a good experience then we'll get another one that we can turn into a pet and walk around the yard yens is following me don't want nothing to do with me until it's feed times then it's all hands on deck ain't it huh all hands on deck when it's feed time. I see both onions. That one there and that one right there. They were nesting all day yesterday. Now they're off the nest. I don't know why. Let's they decide what they're going to do. Stay on the nest or get off the nest. I don't think none of these chickens can figure it out. Yes, and they want to. Come on, onions. Move. Come on. Like I say, I don't think any of these chickens can figure out what they want to do, whether they want to. Whether they want to. Uh, lay and sit on the eggs or if they want to just go lay eggs and be done with it hey, every day it's a new adventure out here with these guys seeing what in the world they're doing oh yeah and old dave he's back up to his antics again i guess he's feeling feeling a little better because old dave's feeling a little better i caught him yesterday a couple times trying to Trying to eyeball me. I said, you eyeballing me, boy? Do I owe you money or something? He said, Burp. Yeah, I said, huh? Come on over here, I'll, I'll teach you a thing or two. Come on over here, I'll teach you how to do the, the, the chicken shake. Y'all ever seen the chicken shake? I've seen, I've seen the chicken shake several times. Especially when you get them close to the butcher block. Them jokers knock them in the head and they start jumping and flipping and flopping oh chicken shake chicken shake oh chicken shake make no mistake 
He's got the chicken shake. He's got the chicken shake. <laughs> oh, man. Yep. Oh, let's get these jokers fed. Done up here. We can give a little bit right here. I like to try to cover every square inch of their pen. Like I've told you many a time, I like to cover it because that gives them plenty of space. They're not, they're not trying to fight over area. Gives them plenty of places to go scratch and all that good stuff. And then you ain't got to you ain't gotta worry about them picking at each other and fighting over the food and all that. Try to make sure I get it all spread out here. I want them. I want them to be busy, 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 busy. I don't want no bored chickens. No bored chickens. The bad thing is, it's usually the white ones that find all the food. <laughs> all right. Yeah. All right, now, well, let's see what these eggs look like. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Still nine. Just kicking them around. Looks like, uh, looks like Maud has been back up to kicking them out of the nest that's a warm egg that's warm 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 that was a warm egg that's aggravating what we got up here anything different they've moved one so something's been up there one two three four five six seven eight Eight eggs. They have moved one because there was. Uh, uh. Oh, they still moved it. Yeah, they've still moved it. I may end up coming out here and grabbing a bunch of them and taking them inside. That's all the better they can do with them. Cause we've been having lots of them hatching out. So there's one. I'm trying to nest over there, but there's a big pile of them back in there. Look at them eggs. Look at all them eggs, my goodness. There's a pile of them there. Yeah, that's a lot of eggs. All right, well. Let's go see about some more of this here. Like I say, probably come out a little bit later. Pull some, because a lot of mine. You're still on the nest. You've not moved. You must be really broody. I was wondering about you. Are you broody? Are you broody? You look broody. That's a warm egg. Yeah, I think you're broody. Okay, I'll leave you alone. She's 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 poofed up there and got her auspice. She's she's the eggs are up underneath her auspice. <laughs> They're doing pretty well, so, all right, well, that's the egg situation for today. Let's on all to the right. next. <clears throat> so, uh, it's 3, um, 30, I believe, in the afternoon, and I've had the heater on all day inside of here, and we're right at 78 degrees, so, not doing too bad, I don't guess. You can tell it's nice and warm in here, though. And uh, getting ready to water these tomatillos. Going to leave them out all night out here. Just going to water them down real good. And uh, and let them, let them heal up and be ready for the weekend. All righty, here we go. Chili Mac's second feed of the day. Hey, hey, hey. Take your feed. Take this food and eat it. We want to get you as fat as we can. You're gonna look really good on the table with them big fat hams. The side of bacon's gonna look real nice. 
When I get a slice, well, I can't wait to fatten you up and stick you in the ice. <laughs> in the ice. I love it. Good job, Jaden. We're going to fatten you up and salt you down, stick you in the smokehouse. You're going to taste real yummy to our tummies when we're chowing about. Them old cutters you got ain't nothing for my molars. Take it from me, this here's gonna be the best summer solstice. Hey, 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 Gonna eat that piggy up. We're gonna eat everything but his oink. Oh, well, we're gonna have them nice big shoulders. Fatten them up real good. Gonna tie them up and put them down and boil them for a few hours. Gonna barbecue them and eat them. You just keep on rooting about. You're looking real good there, tummy. Eating all around. Because you're so fat, fat, fatty tummy. You have a big fat tummy. Uh huh. Hey, look here. He's. I know. He's done that. Not, I mean, like, look, look, I told look see. You before. I told you he'd been rodent. No, what I'm saying is, is there's like a groundhog or a mole, and it shot out in his pen, and he's ate it or something. <laughs> Hope we don't find bones in this poop. Let's see. Look, all that up through there is all. See all that? Hold on. Yeah, yeah. I think it makes a path. Yeah, that's it right there. Yeah. And and it just comes on now. And right into his cage. All right, chili mac, chili mac, chili mac, chit chit, chili mac. Chill. Look how big him dag on them. Them shoulders are, man. I mean, they're getting huge. It looks like he is. He's a happy piggy. Pig. Yeah, he's happy. Eating some Arby's and some noodles and all kinds of goodies. Orange peels. Yeah. Eat your fruits and veggies. Don't eat too many carbs. <laughs> <laughs> Say, do you like your ham sandwich? Uh, Alright, that's fine. Well, well, we got uh, we got some chickens that are laying, but we got plenty of chicken eggs. So this she's laying. You can see she's not She's laying. She's not moved all day, so we're gonna leave her alone. Come on over, Jay. I'm gonna hand you some eggs. And you're gonna put them down in that bucket, okay? Gently. We're gonna collect some eggs since the incubator's empty and we're gonna incubate some more. Um, for whatever reason, we had quite a few that uh, were fully developed, maybe two, three days away. And uh, get over here. They're about two or three days away from hatching, I guess. And they just quit. They just quit doing what they were doing. I'm not sure why they quit, but they did. And uh, they had enough yolk for about two or three days left. And then that was it. So I'm not sure what's going on. These white eggs is really what had hatched. About every one of them looked like an Americana. Uh, the brown eggs, we had one brown egg hatch and it was well two of them was there one hatched and uh he died so um i'm not sure what happened there but uh, at any rate so those are the brown we know some of those are browns uh that are the white roost the white chickens the broilers crossed with whatever so uh i'm just going to take these out and uh fill it up again see what's in there oh dad look at this yeah, i gotta yeah it's i gotta clean that off just set them down in there empty this one all the way out and then uh and then we'll I'm gonna let her set on all those i guess she's setting i'm not gonna bother her all right on to the next all right, I'm going to go on ahead and take these out of here. I think that one back there is a duck egg. A couple of them are anyhow. 
So I'm gonna go on ahead and grab those. Give them to Mama Duck. Yeah, that's them. Them's duck eggs, for sure. That's a duck egg. Go ahead and stick it in there easily. And that's for sure a duck egg. You can tell a duck egg just by the coating on it, just how they feel and the look. They're almost translucent from a chicken egg. So we're gonna take all these. That's another duck egg right there. None of the duck eggs that were in there were any good. So I'm hoping this batch is better. Uh, it looks like several duck eggs were in there actually. About all of them were duck eggs in fact. So, except for that one chicken egg, yeah. All right, so we'll hatch those out. Hopefully, this time we'll hatch them out. The other ones don't look like they were fertile. Uh, they had a lot bigger eggs, but they just didn't look fertile. Okay, Jay, come here. And something's kicked out eggs out of here. Either kicked them out or pushed them. That's busted, throw it over in the garden. In the garden you go. Chickens are trying to eat the eggs now. They're busting them. Yeah. Watch out. The chickens are trying to eat it when they get up in here and they, they don't know what their deal is. Jay, you got to start on the outside and go in, baby. Okay. See how that goes? Yep. Outside, then in. That's what I did with this one. I had a half circle. Busting the crap out of these eggs. For no reason Maybe at all. Maybe they're accidentally doing it. No, they ain't accidentally doing it. They think they got a waller out of place in there. So there's plenty of. There's all right, Jay. Here we go. Here we go. Oh man! I've been saving these. Quite a few up there. Oh, they're sticky. Yeah, they're they're sticky. That's because, well, that's because that one gray chicken out there kept kicking this bottom nest down pushing everything out of it and uh every time she did she kicked eggs out and then bust eggs on top of it so Good grief. Yeah. that chicken why would they do that all right, all. All right see. here we go here's some more This should be enough to fill up the incubator. Plus, I'm going to grab the two out from underneath her that are giants. You mean the duck? Yeah. Try to knock that stuff off. Uh, pull it out there if you can. What stuff? The, the nastiness. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, I know. It's nasty, but they won't quit busting. That's just... I don't get that. I don't either. I don't get it either. They think they have to own the whole darn nest to kick out the eggs. Yep, pretty much. I'm going to leave that one in there. It's nasty. That's a decent size one right there. No, they're nasty, though. Ew. Oh, I think that's fresh yolk on that one. No, it's not fresh. We'll definitely have to wash our hands. Yeah. Sticky, sticky, sticky. One over there if you don't care to grab that one. I don't know. There's a pile of them up here. Well, there was. Yeah, they're still there. Hey. This the white wrist is trying to eat the eggs. I don't doubt it. Go ahead and guard them. Guard them right there. Hey, Mommy. You got something I need. Yeah, you do. You got something I want. I'm going to reach my hand under here and I'm going to get them. That's big of those things. Double yoker duck, maybe? Uh -oh. If it's a double yoker duck, that would be, that would be weird and dead. Is that a jump? It's a duck egg. I'm going to put it back under there. I was. That, uh, that's a pretty pink egg, actually. Yeah, that's not the one I'm looking for. So you're talking though, the one that you're, you're looking, looking for either. is you. Was that a hiss? Yeah. Oh gosh. Mean. There they are, right there. I'm right in the center of her. Ha <laughs> ha
Surprise, Jules. There it is. Oh, gosh. That's, that's a, the one I'm looking for. Surprise, surprise. Look at that difference. That's one. It's warm. Yeah, I know. It's because she's been sitting on it crazy. What do you think it's going to be? I thought it was just light at first. And there's the other. She does a good job when you're not looking, but when you start looking, she'll mm -hmm. either get right off. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. I did not expect her to have those little bags like that. Like a custom hand warmer. She is protective. I'm surprised that she's scared of the chickens. She's scared of us. Come on, back up. Back up, back up, back up, back up. Back up, back up. All right, so this is the other double yoker. There's three of them. Jaden, get the other two out of there. That's one double yoker. And these are the other double yokers. Look at the difference. Move your hand, baby. Look at the difference in that. Like one really huge double yoker, a bigger double yoker. Biggest. This, this thing here's the, a goose egg. I mean, that thing is ginormous. Look at the difference. I'm a nine. -year -old. Those are all double yokers, but they, like, that was the first one, this was the second, and that was the biggest. That's crazy. It's like going small. To the We're biggest. about to find out if that one we got from the neighbor's going to hatch too, because uh, we got we got it in there. And, I'm a, uh, and uh, just a couple more days till it hatches. That's almost as big as Jaden's hand. And I'm nine. Like his whole hand. That's crazy. All right, so here's a couple things. All of our new duck eggs. So there's one, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Twelve duck eggs. And we'll check them in seven days this time and make sure they're fertile. If they're not got veins and stuff growing, we'll kick them out. Now we have. Here's the double yoker from the neighbor's house. That's one that we know is a double yoker. Here's a double yoker that we pulled out of here. You see the difference? These are two double yokers right here. And this one here. Now I want you to look. That's one double yoker. That's two double yokers. Okay. Now. Go ahead and move this one up here above it. Move it on that very to the side. Here's a third double yoker. You see how big that egg is? That egg, if I lay it out flat on my hand, that's how big it is on my hand. Hand daddy? That is a huge egg. Anyways, daddy. wait, Kara. The uh, the I'm reason. Video, yep, I'm making a video. Oh, careful. All right, so let me put these back. The reason why these have two days marked on them is because she sat on those for two days. They were hatched. Um, and then this one was laid, I guess, either yesterday or today, okay? So that's the reason that's got two days on there. So I kind of can figure out what's what, you know, based on when I know that that chicken laid those two eggs. That thing there, that's just, that's just an absolute giant. I'm gonna have to measure that thing. But anyhow, here's the rest of the eggs. Of course, we got the neighbors up there, one, two, three, and four, okay? They got roughly another day and a half as well as the ones with the hearts on them and the axes uh, another day or two okay and then all the rest of these new eggs in here that's a bunch of them so uh don't really know how many but we can count them one two three four five uh, i gotta mark that one oh, thank you let's mark it right now there we go. Yeah, may have to mark it again in a minute. Anyways, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, 
16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44. 45, 46, 47. 47 eggs new in here. Well, plus the 12 duck eggs. 47 chicken, 12 ducks. That's what we got. And we'll replace all these in a couple days. Those four from the neighbor and all these up here. In just a couple days, we'll replace all those with new eggs. So there we go. All right, guys. So there's my heat lamp. And it's not really a heat lamp per se, but it gets very, very, very hot. And I can tell you right now, it's the first time that I've opened this up today. And it's pretty cold out here. I open this up and it's really warm in here. Pumpkin plant's looking great. Uh, I would say it's probably close to 70 some, about 75 degrees in here. I mean, it's, it's pretty nice. And that was only with the heat cables in. Okay, so now we got the light in. That'll help. It, it's uh, about 5.30 now. And so this... Having that light in will help it. I'll come out here tomorrow, turn it off, and turn it back. If if it needs to be turned off, I'll turn it off. If not, I'll leave it run like I did the uh, the uh, heater in the greenhouse today. But it's it's warm. I know it don't look like much. You know, all this this plastic it was fine until and tight until the wind come yesterday, and the wind really jacked it up. So I'm not gonna fool with it. If it's providing heat and sunlight. I'm I'm gonna let it grow and just leave it alone. And so there it is, a 1378 new growing first day out, full 24 hours. It's looking great. Soil cable is in. It's keeping it warm, and uh, and we got the heat lamp on it now. We're good to go. So uh, we'll check this. We'll come out and look tomorrow, and uh, and see how it's doing. Then toward the end of the week, I'll see how much bigger it is compared to the ones that are still in the pot. Hoping that after this cold snap this week, we can get these plants out of here and put them out here on the on the actual plot that we got for them and let them start taking off and running. So we'll see, though. What Catch are these, later. Kara? Um, uh, these are plants. What, what kind of plants? Mm, they're green. Yeah, they're yeah. green, but what kind? Are they strawberries? Mm, yeah, the strawberries. Strawberry plants? You want to show them the little baby strawberries? Yeah. Look at the little baby berries. See the baby berries? Yeah. Those are baby strawberries. And look at the pretty white flowers. Don't pick them. Those are going to be berries too. Yeah. So we didn't know that we were going to get strawberry. We was going to order some from Baker Creek. And yeah, we are going and to. And we do couldn't it. do it no more because they said they had done sold out for the year. Yeah, we did. Yeah. But we know if we do anything. Yeah. But. High five me. All right. Anyways. Uh, the neighbor, they had to thin theirs out, so they gave me nine plants here, and that should be a good start. Real good start to our strawberry patch. I believe next year when we buy some more, or these get more on them, we'll just continue to go that way with it, because look how dark this dirt is. It's black. The further this way you go, the blacker it gets, so we, but we got nine plants there, and they already got berries on them, so we're going to water them in, and, and then they gave me some, uh, like no, onions. not the onions. It starts with a C. Do anything, but... hmm. um. <laughs> Can't think of it. Well, anyhow, they gave it to me. I got it, and I got to go put it in a cup. So, uh, cilantro. Yes. They gave me some cilantro, and uh, we we needed some. They had several little baby plants there, so they gave me some of that, and I'm gonna go and put them in cups and. Call it a night, put this video together, and put it on YouTube for you guys. So that's, we didn't get a lot done today. Um, I did, did do some more down here on the pumpkin patch. Then I had to run over there. We got more eggs in the incubator and stuff. So we did do that, but uh, got my light in there. Look at the light. Bright light on the pumpkin plant. Got all this dug up so far, and then I dug the whole row down that way. And I think I'll just continue digging the rows that way instead of going that way. Seemed like it just went by quicker digging it all the way lengthwise than it did widthwise. 
so anyhow we're gonna do all that and then uh, as soon as it dries out and gets ready we'll come in here with a tiller till it all down and probably plant I'm hoping that we can uh, maybe get some uh, uh, peat moss before then but you know these supply chains and everybody not having anything and so it's kind of a little hard but uh, if we get it we get it if we don't well we just grow without it this year and hope and pray we get it next year but look how pretty that sky is would you look at that beautiful ain't it just beautiful all right well we can get over here we're gonna plant our cilantro and then we're gonna put this video together post it on youtube for you guys and we'll see y'all yeah. tomorrow well actually yeah. what are we gonna do um, we're gonna see them tomorrow right yeah see yous tomorrow yeah thank yous for watching right yeah all right homestead is good for me homestead is good for you that's right give them a big thumbs up cool say so see yous later all right, so there's our cilantro. There's one, two, three, four, five, and six. Six things of cilantro, and they'll grow pretty quick and should should do us pretty well for the year. I'm putting it in salsas, and, and we use it in our pico and stuff like that, so we love cilantro here. So very thankful that the neighbors got me them cilantros and strawberries, and they also gave me some onions. We're going to have some fried bologna sandwiches, I believe, and onions like a jalapeno bologna and toast cheese gouda cheese and uh onions oh it's it's tastes so good and make your tongue slap your brains out but we're out of here yes them's pretty cool lights ain't they ain't that cool yeah that's cool i put them up for christmas and i still ain't took them down so we get down around here for christmas y'all wait till christmas time comes y'all see it's a party around here don't forget to smash that like button Hit that notification bell. Don't forget to share. Thank you, good sir. You're welcome. And subscribe.